Welcome back for lesson seven of our John study. So my family wasn't always Methodist. My initial childhood was in the Foursquare Gospel Church. Uh, that's one of the reasons my older brother is a Foursquare Gospel pastor, is that's really where he grew up for most of his years. Me, it was in middle school, or just before middle school, that we went to the Methodist Church, and that's when I became part of the Methodist Church. So, in some ways, I've kind of had my feet in two different realities. But, that's another topic for another day. Our first pastor that we had in the United Methodist Church, uh, by the name of Lee Michaels, he had a habit after every Bible study, or I should say after the end of every lesson for a Bible study, is he would ask the question. And that question was, so what? What difference does what we just studied or read make? If you can't answer the so what question, then there really isn't much of a point in doing the lesson, is there? He would always do that. And whenever I approach a text, I always try to remind that, uh, myself of that question. So what? Well, before we get to the so what, I want to remind you that the Gospel of John was written to a mostly illiterate audience. People were meant to hear the Gospel of John, not read the Gospel of John. This is a problem today when we talk about being people of the book, <laughs> because most of us can read. Not everybody, obviously. There are some who can't. But we have such an emphasis of looking at the text, we forget that this is an auditory process that we are called to engage in. The theme verse for today that I chose, this was the one that stuck out to me in our reading, comes from chapter 20, verses 21 through 23. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The reason I want you to remember that these verses were meant to be spoke to an entire congregation is often these verses, like that one in particular, have been interpreted to be the realm of pastors. It's just clergy that are to be the ones who can call a sin for a sin or call people out. Except that's not the way the text would have been heard. It would have been heard by the entire congregation. In other words, the priesthood of all believers, to use churchy language. That means all of us have a stake in the future of our local congregation and our world congregation. We have a role to play in deciding how we are going to be and how we are going to live out God's mission. If the mission that is given here in this chapter is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the light of God for the world, the love of God for everyone, then we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do that. Often we look to the beginning of the book of Acts and we read in the first few chapters about how the disciples met together and prayed and then there's the tongues of fire that come down and, and people speak in tongues and they hear in their own language. You know, we celebrate that at Pentecost and we talk about that as the Holy Spirit came down that day. Yet here, here in this particular passage, we see that Jesus has already given the disciples the Holy Spirit. It happened before the beginning of the book of Acts. In fact, the word that is used here for breath is a very important one. It's used to describe um, the Holy Spirit in various scripture passages. It's the same root word that goes back to uh, the prophet Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, when the wind, the breath of God, flowed upon the dry bones and they came back to life. It's the same word that is used in the book of Genesis, at the beginning of Genesis, that speaks about God breathing his life into Adam and, of course, later Eve. The breath of God, the Holy Spirit, 
God, in this passage, Jesus, gives us the Holy Spirit that we might bring forth the gospel and share it. I'd like you to take some time and begin that thought of, so what? What have you learned up to this point? What difference does this make in your life? For this section in particular, what difference does it make knowing that God has given everyone the Holy Spirit? This isn't something you need to pray for or wait for. You, as a Christian, have the Holy Spirit with you. It is with you each and every day. What does this mean? So what? Have that conversation right now.